dear students today we are going to continue the topic of metallurgy of aluminium today we will be learning that what are the basic reactions which are taking place in the electrolytic tank during electrolytic reduction now as we can recall that in the electrolytic tank we have taken the electrolytic mixture cryolite fluorospar and alumina now why we have taken cryolite why we have taken fluorospar the reasons are well known to us now now the moment we mix them and add them in the electrolytic tank even before we have passed the current the dissociation of the compound has already started because they are ionic compounds so here Na3AlF6 it dissociates into sodium ions aluminum ions and fluoride ions similarly fluor uh, calcium fluoride also that is your fluorospar it also dissociates into calcium ions and fluoride ions alumina it dissociates into aluminum ions and oxide ions now all the positive ions sodium ions calcium ions aluminum ions which are formed in the solution they start moving towards the electrodes now since we know that cations they move towards the cathode and anions they move towards the anode now we have three type of positive ions here now the first thing that comes to our mind that will they all three travel with the same speed or one of the ions will travel with a more speed or less speed now for that more detail will be explained to you in the chapter electrolysis for this part i am just letting you know that lower the ion in the electrochemical discharge series now you will ask what is electrochemical discharge series it is similarly like your reactivity series now we have electrochemical discharge series also now lower the position in the electrochemical series it is discharged preferentially so the top ones don't get discharged first but the bottom ones get discharged first now let's see we have sodium calcium and aluminum now if we don't even know the electrochemical series but we know the reactivity series we can relate to that also now sodium and calcium they are above aluminum so out of the three cations aluminum is at the lower most position so the rule is the one that is lower will move first so out of the three cations aluminum starts moving towards the cathode first so you can see here that aluminum starts moving towards the cathode and at cathode always reduction takes place so aluminum ions they are accepting electrons that is reduction so aluminum ions become metallic aluminum atom clear now what is cathode remember i had shown you the diagram yesterday in yesterday's video cathode is basically the inner carbon lining of the cell so the question comes what is the cathode made up of so answer will be it's the carbon lining and what reaction takes place at cathode this is the reaction that takes place at cathode now the next question is that what happens at anode basically what i what is anode made up of anode if you can recall yesterday's diagram anode is basically thick rods of graphite which are suspended into the fused electrolyte now anode what happens at anode the anions fluoride and oxide they start moving now similarly oxide moves first so oxide ions they move first and at anode oxidation takes place that is why loss of electrons so this oxide becomes a molecule of oxygen o2 so when this oxygen gas is trying to escape out you know our rods are made up of graphite so the graphite that is carbon it reacts with the oxygen first it makes carbon monoxide then further it reacts with more oxygen and it makes carbon dioxide so what will be the observation at anode observation at anode will be carbon dioxide gas it will not be oxygen gas oxygen is formed initially but when it starts moving out of the cell 
it reacts with the graphite that is carbon and it makes carbon dioxide so now what kind of questions can be asked from these reactions they can ask you what happens at cathode so you write this equation what happens as what happens at anode so you write these four equations what is cathode made up of carbon lining what is anode made up of graphite rods so these are the four possible questions that can be asked from this topic now that's all for the metallurgy of aluminium refining of aluminium is not in our syllabus so now the next metallurgy we are doing today is metallurgy of zinc in this slide i have given you more written matter but you see that which are the basic points i focus on so you learn that first of all whenever we start metallurgy we have to learn the ore so the ore that is going to be used is zinc plenty that is zinc sulfide historically extraction of zinc was very difficult why because whenever we do metallurgy we require little high temperature but the problem that was associated that zinc starts changing into gas at very high temperature it's written there that where metals such as iron typically begin to melt zinc is a gas so due to this problem of zinc metallurgy of zinc was quite difficult for a number of years but later on it was achieved so zinc blended does not contain a very high percentage of zinc hence it needs to be concentrated now you can see in the formula sulfide is there so as per the rule when sulfide is there so which method we opt for concentration froth flotation process now froth flotation process is mainly used to remove the gang from the sulfide ores now you understand that in the big tank we put the ore in a powdered form and uh, we have uh, some stabilizers that will stabilize the froth so it will not let the bubbles rupture so it will stabilize the froth and uh, once we put and we have pine oil pine oil why pine oil is called collector because as uh, pine oil is going to engulf our uh, sulfide ores so that is why it is called collector you don't have to learn so much this has been basically given for more of your understanding so basically you understand that that in the metallurgy of zinc for concentration we apply the process of froth flotation and it is why it is selected what is the principle principle is preferential wettability of ore by oil and gang by water so the method employed is froth flotation now after uh, we have done froth flotation now the basic problem now we are having is our ore is in the sulfide form now it is it must be very clear to you by now that the ore has to be in the oxide form then only it can be undergone it can be made to undergo reduction so what we do this is called roasting so we are doing roasting of zinc sulfide so zinc sulfide it burns in excess of oxygen and it gets converted into zinc oxide and the volatile impurity that is coming out is sulfur dioxide so many time they ask name the volatile impurity that is evolved when zinc sulfide that is zinc blende is roasted so that time we really can't even uh, think of that such a simple question is there but it's sometimes it becomes very difficult to recall that what are they asking what do they mean by volatile impurity so volatile impurity is your sulfur dioxide now this zinc oxide is mixed with a reducing agent coke you can't use any other reducing agent zinc oxide only works with coke so this coke is going to take away the oxygen and zinc changes into zinc spelter so this zinc that is formed is still not pure so we have to remove the little bit impurities left the uh, metal in crude metal is called spelter and it can be purified by distillation so basically here in these slides i have show i have shared more content but you have to focus only on the equations now next last part of our chapter is alloys now we have to study only five alloys one is duralumin stainless steel this is being shown to you on this slide now when we talk about duralumin they ask you that what is the principal metal you will say aluminium so duralumin is composed of 95% aluminium 4% copper 
0.5% magnesium and 0.5% manganese. You learn them in this order only because sometimes they ask you to encircle the main component. So if you don't even remember the percentages, the highest one you learn first. Highest percentage you learn first. So you know the first thing that you learn is the main component. Now why duralumin is better uh, than the pure alumin, aluminium? Because it is light but as strong as steel. It is hard and resistant to corrosion, highly ductile. So as a result of this, how it is used? It is used to make bodies of aircraft, buses and tube trains. It is used to make light tools and pressure cooker. This question was there in, in this year's board exam that named the alloy that is used to make light tools. So answer was duralumin. Similarly for iron, the alloy is stainless steel. Main component is your iron. It resists corrosion. It is lustrous. It is resistant to acids and alkalis. So that's the reason it is used to make utensils, cutlery, ornamental pieces and surgical instruments. Why? Because it doesn't get rusted. It resists corrosion. Now, next alloy in our syllabus is brass, bronze and solder. Brass and bronze, the principal metal are zinc and copper. But as per the composition, the main component is copper. You can see the percentage. In brass, it is copper and zinc. 60 to 70% and zinc is 40 to 30%. Now why brass? Why brass is preferred? Because it's malleable and ductile, can be easily cast, it resists corrosion and it is yellow or silvery in color. So for what it is being used? Decorative hardware, screws, handles, cartridge, containers, part of watches, musical instruments, electrical goods. Similarly bronze, it has one extra component, tin. But zinc is in very less percentage. So if they ask you the principal or the main component in the bronze alloy, then you have to say copper because you can see it's 80%. You need not learn the percentage, but you should know that which is the main component. So it is hard and easily cast, can take a polish, it resists corrosion. So it is used to make medals, statues, utensils, bearings and coins. Now another alloy of lead. The main, the principal metal is lead. It is called solder or fused metal. Here, lead and tin are 50%, 50%. And now why it is preferred? Because the solder or fused metal has low melting point, but it has high tensile strength. So for this reason, it is used for welding and making fuse. So these are the <coughs> five alloys that you have to learn. More are given in your textbook, but they are not in your syllabus. You have to learn only these five alloys. Somehow, every year, one or two mark question is asked from the alloy table. As I mentioned earlier, one question that came this year was light tools. What, which alloy is used to make light tools? And one question that came this year is which alloy is used to make statues? So, this table can uh, will be there in your board exams for one to two marks so you can learn it the way it is given so that's all for your chapter metallurgy i hope you have understood again i will mention that assignment for this chapter is your note making and you have to send this on my email and i'm going to see the that you have made the notes in your copies or not thank you